<laughs> Chapter 8 Mersenne Primes. Okay, now we're going to talk about Mersenne numbers. So I have to pick one of my Mersenne numbers to sort of exemplify the category. Now, my primary school always makes me do this. So I've decided to pick 31 because by 2028, my year six teacher, Miss Donison, will be 31. So it's a nice personal number for her. <laughs> so 31 is our example of a Mersenne prime. So a Mersenne prime is a prime number to begin with. Like 31. 31 is a prime number. A prime number is, as you'll probably remember, a number that can only be divided by one and itself. The first few prime numbers are two, three, five, seven. 31 is a prime number, but she is a special type of prime number because she is one less than a power of two. What are the powers of two? Well, you've got two, you've got four, you've got eight, 16, 32, and so on. Okay, so that's just two by two by two by two by two. That's the sort are of thing. Are you going to upload this? To None you? of these are prime numbers, but let's have a look at one less. Well, one. Now, if I'm honest, we don't say one is prime. There's a special reason for that. But let's have a look at the others. Three is a prime number, and she's one less than a power of two, so she counts as a Mersenne prime. Seven. Is a, is a prime number. And he's one that's been a power of two. Fantastic. 15. Now he's not a prime number. So he does not count. And 31. There you go. She was our example of a Mersenne prime. Now there aren't many of these Mersenne primes. In fact there's only 47 Mersenne primes. Now they start off as three. Seven. 31, the next one after that is 127. So let's have a look at the next couple. The powers of 2, 64, and 128. And, well, this is 63. And he's not prime. But this is 127. She is prime. So she's one of our Mersenne primes. They're called Mersenne primes because they are named after a French mathematician called Marin Mersenne, who was a monk, a mathematician, and a musician, and a fan of alliteration. His favourite cartoon was Mighty Mouse, his favourite film was Mad Max. So, he was in contact with a lot of other mathematicians around the world, and he was trying to make a list of this special type of prime number, and that's why they're named after him. Are they useful? Are they used by code breakers? Are they used to make better iPads? Or are they just a game for smart mathematicians like you? Well, prime numbers are obviously very useful for, to mathematicians. They're famous and they're famous for a reason. Mersenne primes are a special type of prime number. Something very special about Mersenne primes is that they are related to the perfect numbers. I've talked about perfect numbers before. They were 6, 28, 496, 8,128. They were known by the ancient Greeks. They were given this idea that they were perfect, unique. Mersenne primes and perfect numbers are two sides of the same coin. Let me show you why. If I pick a Mersenne prime, let's call it M for Mersenne prime. Okay, so M is our Mersenne prime. Times her by n plus 1, divided by, t divided by 2, and that will give you a perfect number. Let me show you. 3 by 4, divided by 2. That's 12 divided by 2. That's 6. That's the first perfect number. Let's try the next one. 7. 7 by 8, divided by 2. That's 56 divided by 2. That's 28. That's the second perfect number. 31, same thing, 31 by 32, divide by 2, it, and that will give you the third perfect number, 496. And try 127, 127 by 128, and have it, that's 8,128. Two sides of the same coin. Right, so you can help to find the next Mersenne Prime. It's called the Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search. 
It's a great website with an unfortunate acronym. It's at mersen.org and you can try it yourself. Download the program. It uses collaborative computer power to find the next Mersen Prime. What's the, what's the acronym? I don't know. What should, <laughs> why should I do that? Why should anyone do that? For the glory! Because <laughs> mathematicians will thank you for it. Like the perfect numbers, we don't know if there's infinitely many perfect numbers. We don't know if there are infinitely many Mersen Primes or not. So that's another open question. Something that, hey, maybe you could work out. What's it going to take to work that out? How will that question ever be answered? It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be obvious. It's going to take a different way of looking at things. Coming at it from a different angle. Something that other people haven't tried yet. Maybe not your usual school math, but something else. Whatever it is, it's something we haven't tried yet. The man or woman who does that, what will it mean for them? If a man or a woman comes up with that proof, what will happen? If you do come up with that proof, you will have glory thrust upon you. You will be famous for coming up with such a proof. Something that has eluded mathematicians for hundreds of years. Is it something to have a hunch about? Yeah, I think technically we would have to be Merce and Prime agnostic, but it's definitely something you have a hunch for. Mathematics is done that way. People think mathematics is a dry subject, that it's logical, but people have intuition. They have to pursue their intuition. So if you ask me, I would say, yeah, infinitely many Merce and Primes. Yeah, I would think so. I might be wrong. <laughs>